Hey, my name is Alex. I am a hospital pharmacist. In this video, I will be going through a group of medications called statins. Statins are collectively known as HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, which is commonly prescribed especially in the elderly population. Statins are a class of drugs which a lot of people might tell you that it helps with reducing cholesterol levels in the blood. However, the actual mechanism of statins does more than this, and which I'll talk about later. When we think about statins, we would think about atorvastatin, simvastatin, pravastatin and rosuvastatin, which would be the more common ones you see on a day-to-day -day basis. There are three indications for statins. These are primary prevention of cardiovascular disease, secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease, and primary hyperlipidemia, which basically means high levels of lipid. So we are talking about fat, cholesterol, uh, triglycerides in the blood. So the term cardiovascular disease is a big umbrella term. When we think about cardiovascular disease, we would normally be referring for, to things like myocardial infarction, or heart attack, angina, stroke and TIAs. Uh, TIA is also known as a mini stroke. Other cardiovascular diseases can include arrhythmias, heart failure, etc. Before we talk about the mechanism of statins, we'll need to clarify on a few things. For cholesterol to move around the body, it needs to rely on a protein called lipoproteins, which are represented by these red squares. So these lipoproteins are basically carrier proteins for fats and lipids. These lipoproteins can be classified into four different groups. So these are high density lipoproteins, HDL, low density lipoproteins, LDL, very low density lipoproteins, VLDL, and lastly chylomicrons. The HDLs are considered the good lipoproteins because they help with transporting cholesterol from the tissue into plasma, whereas LDLs transport cholesterol into tissue and they are a big risk factor to the buildup of fatty deposits in the arteries and therefore are considered as bad lipoproteins. In the liver, you have something called the mevalonate pathway. Basically, HMG-CoA is catalyzed by HMG-CoA reductase into mevalonate. Then through a series of cascade events, out comes your cholesterol. Statins act by inhibiting the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase, which therefore reduces the amount of HMG-CoA to be converted into mevalonate and ultimately reducing cholesterol levels. This reduction triggers an upregulation of LDL receptors in the liver cells, which means there'll be more channels on liver cells to take up LDLs from the blood plasma. So it essentially lowers the LDL levels in the blood. Less LDLs in the blood plasma will mean less fatty deposits or plaques being built up in artery walls and therefore lowers the risk of cardiovascular diseases. This would be the main mechanism of how statins work. So it's not as simple as reducing cholesterol levels. It's more to do with reducing the actual LDL levels as these are the culprits to increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Traditionally, people would always be told statins are to be taken at night because there's some evidence to suggest it works better at this time of day. This is because most of the cholesterol is being made when dietary intake is at the lowest. Currently, we still recommend people to take a simvastatin and pravastatin at night. However, the same is not true for atorvastatin and rosuvastatin, as these can be taken at any time of the day. It's preferable for statins to be taken at night, but if for whatever reason, there's some issue or problem with the patient taking, say, atorvastatin at night, and they want to take it in the morning instead, then yes, they can. If they want to take it in the morning, with the rest of the tablets, let them take it in the morning. The important thing here is to improve the compliance to medications and experience to the medications. The reason why atorvastatin and rosuvastatin can be taken any time of the day is solely to do with the longer half-lives. Simvastatin only has a half-life of one to two hours. Pravastatin has a half-life of one and a half to two hours, whereas Atorvastatin and Rosuvastatin has a much longer half-life, that is 
greater than 14 hours. Generally, statins are well tolerated by patients. The common side effects are GI related and headache. There are other side effects, however, I'm not going to go through them all. It's all in the BNF if you need to find out more. There is a side effect that is well known to statins and that is to do with muscle, although it's quite rare for this to happen. The adverse muscle effects we refer to will be myopathy, myositis and rhabdomyolysis. So the things we will look out for are muscle pain, tenderness and weakness. There's an enzyme in your body called creatine kinase or CK, which is usually you, uh, used as an indirect marker for muscle damage. If levels of your CK are raised or if the muscular symptoms are severe, the statin should be discontinued. If it's decided that the statin is to be restarted, i.e. your symptoms have resolved and your creatine kinase levels have normalized, then the statin should be restarted at a lower dose. There's a cool looking diagram from NHS England which describes the pathway for what to do if you're statin intolerant. Um, so if you want more detail, I'll stick the link down in the description below so you can have a look. Statins are eliminated via the kidneys. So to patients with reduced renal function, we would reduce the dose of the statin accordingly with the EGFR. Statins may also be a cause of hepatic impairment, but this is quite rare. There's a specific liver enzyme called alanine aminotransferase, which also goes by ALT. When there is liver damage, this enzyme will be released. When we do our liver function tests and find that the ALTs are raised by at least three times the upper limit of the reference range, then the statin should be stopped temporarily. Statins, compared to some other drugs, have quite a few drug interactions. So it's important that you know these so that you can identify uh, the interactions to avoid potential harm and also being able to optimize patients' medications appropriately. Some of the interactions include statins versus macrolides, which is quite a common drug interaction. Examples of macrolides include clarithromycin and erythromycin. The mechanism of the interaction involves the macrolides being an enzyme inhibitor, specifically the CYP3A4. If you're not sure what enzyme inhibition is, you could check out a video I did on this previously. I'll post a link down in the description. This interaction basically increases the exposure of the statin. If a patient is on a course of clarithromycin, then what we normally do is just hold off the statin until the course of the antibiotic is completed. Statins and colchicine is also an interaction. Colchicine is normally used in acute gout, so the use of statin alongside colchicine can increase the risk of rhabdomyolysis. The same applies with fibrates such as phenofibrate and ezeptimibe. Calcium channel blockers such as amlodipine and diltiazem can increase the exposure of the statin, however it really depends on which one. The use of amlodipine together with simvastatin has a MHR rate alert which can be managed in various ways. One way is to limit the simvastatin dose to 20mg when giving it with amlodipine or diltiazem. On the other hand, there is no clinically significant interaction between amlodipine and atorvastatin so potentially you can just switch it to atorvastatin to bypass this interaction. Grapefruit juice interacts with simvastatin and atorvastatin. The interaction involves increased exposure of these statins. There are more interactions and I've only mentioned a few, so make sure you double check. What are the differences between the statins? Statins can be categorized into three strength intensities, that is high intensity, medium intensity and low intensity. The BNF has a page on dyslipidemia, which has a good table that compares the different statin strengths and intensities. Simvastatin 80mg has a similar result in reducing LDL cholesterol compared to atorvastatin 20mg. So if you see simvastatin 80mg in practice, I would recommend getting it switched to atorvastatin 20mg as the simvastatin 80 are associated with increased risk of myopathy. 
One of the doctors on my board also mentioned a, a very good point that statins can also be categorized as water soluble or lipid soluble. The water soluble statins include pravastatin and rosuvastatin, whilst the lipid soluble statins include atorvastatin and simvastatin. As we know, the greater the degree of lipophilicity or the more lipid soluble something is, the more easier it is for that particular molecule to cross over cell membranes by cellular diffusion. So atorvastatin and simvastatin holds the advantage of being able to easily cross cell membranes. However, it also means it could cross other tissues and other cellular membranes besides the liver cells which we want to target. This means it's not selective towards the liver cells and this is also why you may have more muscle related side effects with the lipid soluble statins compared with the water soluble statins. On the other hand, the water soluble statins such as pravastatin and rosuvastatin have less muscle permeation because they are less likely to cross cell membranes and therefore less muscle related side effects. I would also like to make you aware of something called Q-Risk, which is used in practice. You basically stick in the results on the left here, and it calculates a person's risk of having a heart attack or stroke within the next 10 years, expressed as a percentage depending on the results you put in. If the Q-Risk score comes out to be greater or equal to 10%, then it is recommended that a atorvastatin 20mg once a day should be given as primary prevention of cardiovascular disease. But before you start someone on a statin, you should always offer lifestyle advice and amend other modifiable cardiovascular disease risk factors first. And that is it for this video. If there's something you want to clarify, ask me in a comment and I'll try to answer you in that way. Make sure you give a like and if you want updates to my next videos, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.